Lots of churches jump into using YouTube without ever being intentional about building and most importantly maintaining the channel. YouTube is not only considered a search engine, but also a social media platform. This means it needs to fit into your church's social media strategy. Now, I realize most churches don't have that level of intentionality with social media. That is why I created this video to look at YouTube and help you see what specific things need done to take your channel from good to great, from basic to advanced. So these strategies will help attract more viewers, drive up watch time, and make it a more effective tool for helping your church reach people with the message of Jesus. Hi guys, I'm Nathan Robb, and welcome to Crazy Amazing Designs. I spent most of 2020 as a part of our church's staff team. Managing our YouTube channel was something I was responsible for. So today I wanna to share with you the things I learned running our church's YouTube channel, as well as my own channel, and how you can take your channel to the next level. Before we begin uploading our first video to our channel, we first need to do a couple of things to make our channel look and feel professional. If you already have an existing channel, feel free to do these things at any time. First, let's create a welcome video. I find that one minute is a good length. We wanna keep viewers' attention while packing a ton of great information about our church and our channel into the video. I want us to create a video that potential subscribers will see as they visit our channel for the first time. We can create a second video specifically for returning subscribers, or in most cases, I would just display the most recently uploaded video. Those initial thoughts were actually tips. So let's jump into tip number three. Adding a profile picture and creating a banner are both very important for any YouTube channel. They help us give our channel an identity, a brand. The profile image is usually our logo and the banner helps the viewer visualize the type of content that is shared on the channel. To help you know what size your banner needs to be, I have linked a helpful tool in the description. Open the Photoshop file and begin designing your channel's cover image. Use this file to design an image that looks good no matter what size device you are on. Tip number four. If you're streaming your Sunday morning services to YouTube, decide if you wanna keep the full length service video available for people to watch after it has been streamed, or if you have multiple services with the same message and worship, I suggest deciding which service will be kept for people to rewatch after the fact. Also, think about setting a time limit for how long the full stream service will be available after the service is over. Set up in advance when you plan to go live on YouTube. This way people can set a reminder to be notified to join in on the stream. When you schedule the stream, upload a thumbnail image to be displayed until the stream begins. If your church does a sermon series or sermons in series, then I like to design a themed graphic that can be used for each week one image that can be used for each week of the series. If not, you could create a church branded image that you use. Then if you decide to keep the stream after the live ends, add a new image for the archive video titled, you know, on demand service or something like that. Tip number five. Even if you keep the live stream on the page, edit the sermon portion out of it and post that as a separate video. Give it a title, which includes the name of the sermon and series or pastor's name, and add a description that shares a brief summary of what it's about. Also, take the audio from that video and share it in a podcast format. I created a video about this. It helps those new to podcasts record, edit, and publish a podcast. Tip number six. In those sermon videos, take key turning points from the message, and in the description, add timestamps that include the desired name as well as the timestamp. This will create sections in the video where people can easily jump to. So if a viewer is trying to share a specific story or something from with a friend, it will make it easier to find. Tip number seven. Create an engaging thumbnail for the sermon videos, something that is eye-catching and easy to understand. Photos of the pastor preaching have become the thing to do with sermon video thumbnails. People identify with people and seeing a familiar face tells them that they're in the right place. Tip number eight, quality and consistency are key with YouTube. So make sure that any content going on to the channel meets these standards. There has been lots of talk about upgrades this year from most churches and I would suggest audio, then lighting, and then video. And also this is the priority list in order that I would give on upgrades. With great audio, you can share an awesome podcast. Then with good lighting, you can ultimately add video and begin uploading those sermons to YouTube. Tip number nine. If you upload videos that are being sent out with emails, such as newsletters or thank yous for giving to a project, basically any video that you do not want everyone to see, make sure to keep them unlisted. YouTube has three privacy options. 
Public means that anyone can see the video on the channel. Unlisted means that anyone with a link can see the video, but it will not show up on the channel. And private means that it will not display for anyone even if they have a link to it. Tip number 10, use playlists on your channel to group sermons. Playlists are great for grouping any type of similar videos on your channel. Videos can be added to multiple playlists, such as a sermon series playlist, as well as an all sermons playlist. Tip number 11, end screens help your viewers move on to watching additional content that your channel has to offer. End screens can be set up when uploading your video or from the details page once your video has been published. Tip number 12, Cards allow you to point people to other videos while they are watching the current video. For example, if in a video I mention something that I have previously created a video covering in depth, I could say, if you're interested in this type of content, click on the card on the top right and check out this other video I have going into more depth about that topic. Cards can be created similar to end screens as you can point people to a specific video, playlist, channel, or link. Tip number 13, decide if any other content such as video podcasts, children's ministry videos, talks to the pastor, midweek or morning worship, or anything else will be posted on the channel. If you're going to be posting a lot of specific content for these things, consider starting a second channel to avoid cluttering this sermon streaming channel. There is such a thing as posting too much content of a variety on a channel. Things can become over cluttered and then subscribers can't find the content that caused them to subscribe. YouTube is a wonderful platform. It is an incredible tool that like most tools, if used properly, can be an extremely powerful asset for your church. Consistency is super important on YouTube. People count on being able to see content from their favorite channels on a regular basis. Quickly publishing weekly sermon videos after the service is important so that those waiting to watch or listen can hear the message of Jesus. So let's recap. Churches need to intentionally build and maintain their YouTube channel. Create a video for visitors to give them a glimpse of what the channel is all about. Create a banner that represents the church or content that is on the channel. If streaming live, decide how long to keep the stream service available. When you schedule the stream, add a sermon series themed thumbnail or church branded thumbnail and then replace it for a non-service specific on-demand image once the live is over. Even if you keep the full service stream, cut out the sermon video and upload it. Also, publish the sermon audio in a podcast format. In those sermon videos, take key points and timestamp them in the description. Create an engaging thumbnail for the sermon video. Quality and consistency are key with YouTube, so make sure that any content going onto the channel meets these standards. If you post videos that are being sent out with email newsletters that are not sermon videos, make sure to keep them unlisted so that videos don't show up on the channel, but can still be viewed by those receiving the email. Playlists are key with keeping things organized on YouTube. <laughs> End screens help your viewers move on to watching additional content that your channel has to offer. Cards allow you to point people to other videos while they're watching the current video. If you're posting a lot of content for specific things like children's ministry, create a second channel dedicated to them. There is such a thing as posting too much content on a channel. Things can become over cluttered and then the subscribers cannot find the content that caused them to subscribe. Thanks for joining us today. If you have any questions about this process, leave them in the comments and like the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell for notifications for future videos. Thanks so much and we will see you in the next one.